Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Dice Tower. Uh, just a, a week or so ago, we ran Dice Tower West, which uh, out in Las Vegas, um, around 1,500 people or so came. We had a fantastic time. And this was the first real stress test of the Dice Tower library. We had already uh, kind of half tested it or, you know, on the cruise. But at Dice Tower West, people were there to play games and play games they did. In fact, from my library of games that were checked out, 5,416 games were played. So there was that many checkouts done. Each game that was in the library, there was, it's really hard for me to tell how many games were in the library at this point in time. I know that you feel like I should have exact numbers. I have on my database, I have 1794, but a lot of these are expansions that you could just take. If you take the base game, you take the expansion too. So there was 1,126 games that were checked out in total. And of those, 291 were only checked out once. So there's that kind of, you know, there's a lot of games that are only checked out once. And I'm also taking a look at the games that were checked out zero times. And uh, on average, though, a game was checked out 4.81 times. You also have to remember that we had a very, we had hot games tables. And so for the vast majority of the convention, there were games that were set out like On Mars, uh, Maracaibo, Aquatica. Um, one of the Dominations games was out on the hot table. Oceans was out. Uh, Isle of Cats, one of the copies for that was out. The Crew, uh, Parks, and Atlantis Rising. So you got to keep those in mind that these games were out and they therefore they wouldn't be checked out and necessarily part of the list. So there's a lot of information, a lot of things to unpack here. I'm just going to talk about the top 30 games that were checked out with a couple honorable mentions. First honorable mention is Maracaibo which was on the hot games table, and it was still checked out 16 times, the other copy, I had two copies, which is a pretty strong game, but it's an Alexander Pfister game. The other was Glory to Rome Black Box Edition, which at the con I said, no one's checking this out, because I had saw it in the shelves a few times. I was incorrect on that. It was checked out 18 times. So here we go. I did kind of the top 30, although this, there's a tie for 28, a five-way tie. We have On Tour, uh, the Roll and Write game, very popular. Sagrada. Uh, this one actually, I, I, uh, I, I see how popular Sagrada is. I think I may have to put another copy of this one in just because it's one of those gateway games. On a side note, a lot of modern gateway games got played a lot, like the Centuries and stuff, but Ticket to Ride was only played once, although it was played like eight different times. I'm, I'm counting all the times the expansions were pulled out of the library. But it just by itself, I think it was only played once. Catan, same thing. And uh, Carcassonne, same thing. So it's kind of interesting that those games didn't get as much play. Anyway, back to number 28, Ty. We have Letter Jam, very popular party game. In fact, we ran out of sheets for Letter Jam. It might have got checked out more. And I'm laminating the sheets for it now so that doesn't happen again. Planet. And then Chai, this was a, a tea game. This one for sure had beautiful components and also the lanyards for our convention were sponsored by this. They had a booth there, so very popular, but realized that people were buying the game there, demoing it at the booth, and still was checked out of our library 19 times. Then another game checked out 19 times that I think I need to get another copy for the library, and that's Fantastic Factories. This one seemed to be constantly out, so we'll have to hunt down another copy of that. Then we go to the 23s that were checked out 20 times. Uh, first of all, the crew. So uh, considering we also had a copy out on the hot games table, which was constantly in play, this is pretty high up there. I'm going to have to replace probably both copies of the crew because it got beat up so much with such constant play. I think when people sat down, they didn't just play it once. They played it multiple times. And we probably have to sleeve the new copies. Then we have Santa Monica and the Great Western Trail. Uh, both of which I'm debating on getting another copy of, especially Great Western Trail. Men at Work, this one just looks pretty, so people like to come out and set up the Jenga style of how this one works. Uh, and Marble Bobsleigh, this one I think just people look at it and go, what is that, and pull it off the shelf. It's a big game, takes up a lot of room on the shelf. Big games don't get pulled off the shelf a lot. We have everything for uh, Sentinels in the Multiverse, and almost everything for Marvel Legendary, and almost everything for Dominion. And those don't get pulled off. But Marvel Bobsleigh, this big game where these marbles roll down, for some reason people pulled it out and like to play with it. All those were checked out 20 times. Then 21 time, let's make a bus route. This one, for sure, is being checked out because you can't get this one very easily, but it's in our library. And it's got a lot of buzz from people on the Dice Tower. We had three games checked out 22 times. Nova Luna, 
which is a bit of a surprise. Wasn't expecting this one to be that popular. Horrified, which I did expect to be popular, and I upgraded the pieces in that one. And Raptor, the two-player game. A lot of people enjoyed that. We had two games checked out 24 times. Baron Park, which again makes me wonder, should I get another copy of this? I didn't realize this game would be that popular, but this polynomial type thing, Isle of Cats, etc., is, is bleeding through and people are still enjoying it. And Project L, which again is polynomials, but it's plastic ones. And this one, I think, again, is one that you can't really get many other places right now. Number 18, we had two copies of this game, so it got played a decent amount, and that's Bunny Kingdom. I'm glad to see, I'm always interested to see what games hold up after a couple years. Bunny Kingdom is one of those games. Then this one kind of uh, came out of nowhere. This is one of the higher ones that only had a single copy, and that's Gugong. Gugong got played a ton. Uh, this one's very popular. I like it, but I don't like it as much as other people do, apparently, because this one was very rarely in the library, 26 times. Also checked out 26 times, but both these games had two copies. We have Tapestry, which is still extremely hot. Now, I don't know where this will be in a year or so, but right now, really hot. And Obscurio, which is a party game that a lot of people really enjoy. Both of those are two copies. Only one copy, 28 times, was Res Arcana which again shows I need another copy of that in the library. That was very popular. And Paladins of the West Kingdom was checked out 28 times, but there was three copies of that. So that one is a longer game, too, for sure. So I don't know that I'm going to be dropping down from those three copies, but definitely need another copy of Res Arcana. All right, number 11, or a tie for number 11, is Marvel Champions. I had two copies of that, checked out 30 times. And Isle of Cats also checked out 30 times, and that doesn't include the fact that we had one on the hot games table. That's really hot. I think Isle of Cats was never in the library. Then, here we go, top 10. Number 10, there were two copies of Tiny Towns, and they were checked out 34 times. Very popular game from AEG. AEG definitely has does well on these lists of games checked out from the library. We had two copies of Imperial Settlers Empires of the North, which were checked out 36 times. Then we had two copies of Space Base, back with AEG, for 37 times. And then the second highest game that, was, that we only had one copy of, and I'm desperately trying to find another copy of this one, is Blitzkrieg. Now, I don't know that that's because I said it was my two-player game of the year. I'm hesitant to say anything I say has any effect on this stuff, but this game was hot. I mean, that's short, so that helps, you know, it's easy to get out and play, but wow, Blitzkrieg was played a lot. The game that was played the most, number six, that only had one copy, and we'll get another copy of this because of how popular it is, is Azul, Summer Pavilion, played 41 times. So that's a lot for one copy. We'll definitely have another copy of that. It's the new Azul. Um, so the different Azul, uh, the uh, second edition of Azul did not make the top list. It was like played around, I think, 17 or 16 times. Then three copies of this in the library, and this is no surprise, number five, Wingspan. Right, 48 times between those three copies. It takes a little bit longer to play Wingspan and get it set up and everything. And we had some really nice copies of that. We had uh, four copies, I think, of Point Salad for whatever reason, and that got played 52 times. That's an easy filler. So that was our number four. Number three with three copies in the library, Everdell. 52 times. Actually, I guess that's tied with Point Salad. They're both three. Um, they, uh, Everdell, which is a pretty grandiose looking game, takes a bit to play, like 90 minutes or so. So 52 times is a lot. It means it was never in a library. Only two copies in the library, but checked out 60 times, is just the original Azul, which makes the Azul franchise the most popular franchise in the library. Um, I guess the West Kingdom one, Architects, was checked out several times, and uh, Paladins, I already mentioned, Architects a little bit lower down on the list, but was checked out multiple times, but uh, Azul just, just reigns supreme. I mean, if I added all three Azuls together, it beats any other franchise in the library. And then the number one game, with three copies in the library, checked out 86 times, is Quacks of Quedlingburg. Uh, now, part of that is because we have all ours blinged out with really nice pieces in there, but it is also just that popular of a game. So I might, uh, that, there you go, those are the stats from the Dice Tower Library. Like I said, I might come back later and take a look at some of this stuff and 
which games were never checked out. The, the top 10 games that surprised me, they were never checked out. We'll see. And some of the games were only checked out once because I grabbed them from the library and taught them people because they had never heard of them. But overall, this is some interesting stuff. We'll come back as we do each convention as the years go by, and we'll compare these numbers and look at them. I hope you, if you came to Dice Tower West, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you. There's time to sign up for it now. There's even time to sign up for Dice Tower East and Dice Tower Retreat. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. See you all later.